Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Justin Gaz up, uh, and this is Living and Moving right here into Seattle, Washington, the Puget Sound, the Pacific Northwest, the greater Seattle metro area. And in this episode, we are going to jump in and talk about Fremont. This video is gonna be everything that you need to know, the nitty gritty about living in the Fremont neighborhood right here in Seattle. So if you wanna know what it's like to live, eat, work, play in Fremont and Seattle, this is the neighborhood for you. If you haven't already hit that like, subscribe so that you're notified every time we release a new video, but let's get right into it. Okay, so I wanna show you a little bit about Fremont. We're helping people make the move in Fremont all the time. Uh, and if you're thinking about moving to the area, you can always reach out to us. But I want to deep dive and give you an idea uh, about Fremont, because uh, when we think about neighborhoods in Seattle, a lot of people think about Queen Anne, Capitol Hill, Ballard, right? Uh, Fremont, these neighborhoods come up all the time. Obviously, there's other neighborhoods, you know, Pioneer Square, downtown Belltown, uh, and all of, you know, Rainier, Rainier Valley, Columbia City. Like, there's all these little areas, right? So I always try to compare, you know, kind of the three main areas that, that people think about. A lot of people want to live, you know, in Capitol Hill uh, that are moving to the area for this first time that are in their, you know, young 20s, early 30s. Capitol Hill, there's a lot to do, right? And then we hear Ballard and Fremont, right? Those are kind of the, the, the areas that are drawn to. Well, Ballard is five different neighborhoods. Ballard used to be its own city before it was annexed by Seattle. So there's, you know, the Adams neighborhood in Ballard. There's the West Woodland neighborhood in Ballard. There is Sunset Hill. There's Loyal Heights and Whittier Heights, right? Okay, so those are the five neighborhoods. When we look at neighborhoods, you know, we're not, landmass wise, Fremont is much, much smaller than Ballard. That's why I bring that up because it's just so much smaller. So it's hard to compare the two, right? Very, very different neighborhoods. So Fremont is eclectic. Fremont is uh, one of those neighborhoods that uh, had a strong arts scene. They, they call themselves affectionately known as the center of the universe. Uh, there's even a sign in the ground I'll show you that has, that has a, a center of the universe and then all the distances to everywhere else. They're known for a couple of things. They have a big solstice parade, uh, I think July 21st, July 20th. Uh, and there's a naked bike ride, right? So people ride their bikes. It's not against the law to ride your bike naked, but that's the time when you see it and it happens in Fremont. Now, Fremont, uh, like a lot of neighborhoods like Capitol Hill with their you know strong arts and, and, and music scene, Capitol Hill, Fremont had that as well. And you know some of that stuff got pushed off, but it still is pretty quirky. They've got a night market, a weekend you know, farmer's market that has a lot of records and jewelry and other different things that, that you would, wouldn't uh, normally see at a regular farmer's market. It's more like an arts and crafts market. You know, it's just a really unique, small neighborhood. And so most of the neighborhood, most of the things that you're gonna find to do are gonna be along 36, North 36. Uh, right there and close to the Fremont Clip Cut, close to the water. There's some stuff on Stone Way that runs north to south and Fremont Avenue north to south. And in between, obviously, there's little shops and stuff in between. But generally speaking, you have 36, that's a main thoroughfare. That turns into Leary Way. If you watched any of the Ballard videos, Leary Way continues uh, along kind of the Ballard Cut all the way into the warehouse district and then continues through Ballard kind of it's a kind of a diagonal road right so 36 is that road in Fremont it's a main thoroughfare and there's lots of shops and restaurants right on 36 so it is quite a bit of traffic if you're in town trying to cross the streets there and then there's a little bit on the other side of I want to say it's Fremont Ave where the Fremont bridges where um, there's some other, you know, newer buildings and, and newer little shops, and I think like the Schilling Cider House is in one of those, uh, one of the, those locations. But let me kind of show you so we can get a general idea of kind of let's get our bearings. So let me share this, and um, I'm hoping that it'll share the screen well, and I can show you. I have a few tabs open that I want to share with you, uh, just so that we can get 
All right, an idea of what's what when we're talking about Fremont. Okay, so there is Fremont lightly outlined in red. It's not a perfect square, comes up 99, up to 50th, just underneath uh, the Woodland Park Zoo, sometimes called the Ballard Zoo, um, right there. And then you see this kind of swings up Market Street, so Fremont claims this little area. And then over by towards the substation. Now the substation, interestingly enough, would probably tell you that they're in Ballard, right? I've worked with the folks over the sun, uh, substation before. We did a little video highlighting what they were doing during the pandemic, uh, uh, in the you know early days of that pandemic. Um, and so, you know, it's very cool venue, music venue, two stages over there. Um, great little bar. They've got actually, if you are a musician, they've got spaces that you can rent and jam space that you can get into. So the substation is a pretty cool venue. Um, coming down eighth, they probably like I said, they probably say that they are actually in uh, Ballard, but they're they're just on that other side of the street that technically they're in Fremont. Okay, so then it winds down, da 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 da, da no big deal, Fremont, and it comes and it wraps in this this uh, uh, this area here from Be Brown Bear. A lot of folks in this area right here by Ross Park in this section of of Fremont. Um, you know, a lot of people will call it free lard because they feel like they're not really in Fremont and they're not really in Ballard. And so there's there's some restaurants over here. Which one is this one? Let's see what that is. Uh, yeah, Big Mario's Pizza, Icebox Cafe. Um, I think that the uh, I think that uh, St Hooligans is right there too, Washington State's. Uh, or I think yeah, they win Best Fried Chicken Award year after year. They have some incredible um, gumbo and, and and a ton of other awesome food there uh so this little section right here they're gonna say that they're in free lard technically they're in fremont so now the thing about seattle neighborhoods is they don't really feel like they have borders or kind of amoebas right they kind of feel like they float and move around a little bit but they're fairly well defined right um but it is kind of funny to go in like i used to you know door knock and 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 do that sort of thing as a real estate professional right and so uh, I'd ask people, what, hey, especially on those borders, right? What neighborhood do you think you're in? Like these folks uh, by 50th and in this area here, you know, they, they would think that they're, you know, in Wallingford or or, uh, um, or Meridian, right? And these different, uh, where's 50th? Right over here in this, this area. And we get some different names for those neighborhoods. So anyway, so here's Fremont as we look at it. Let's zoom out a little bit so you can see Fremont. There's a Woodland Park Zoo, very close to Green Lake, very easy to get to Green Lake. And then Ballard, you can see that Ballard, um, you know, like I mentioned, Sunset Hill, Loyal Heights, Weir Heights, uh, downtown here, this section here is called Adams. Uh, and then we have West Woodland because it's west of the Woodland Park Zoo, right? So really close to Ballard, really close to Golden Gardens. Um, Ray's Boathouse is a cool restaurant over uh, in Sunset Hill area. Decent shopping in, you know, if you live in Fremont, you're probably going to go to the Fred Meyer and Trader Joe's and Ballard really easy. And then if you look at the map, you're just north of Queen Anne, just north of Lake Union and just north here, let's slide up just north here of downtown Seattle, right? So a lot of folks, South Lake Union used to be a place that you would avoid at all costs. But, you know, years ago we had tech move in, we had a lot of redevelopment. And so now South Lake Union is a place People go on purpose, which is wild. Uh, having grown up in the area, I remember, you know, coming through when I was, you know, going to concerts or whatever. Um, go, you did not want to go there at all. It was awful. Um, so a lot of warehouses, a lot of fishing, you know, stuff going on still in Lake Union. South Lake Union still is a working, has a lot of working marinas there. Uh, with the fishing industry, the Alaska fleet uh, brings their boats down to Seattle into Lake Union when they're getting fixed, some of the ferries, all kinds of stuff happens in that area. Lots and lots of boat traffic, pretty wild. So, so if you're making that commute and we'll show you, I'll bring it up and I'll show you, but if you're commuting, there's a couple of easy ways to do that. You, know, you have Highway 99, right? How we can go too fast. Highway 99 that you can zoom in, come right down, Aurora Avenue there. You can even come down that 36 there 
uh, or 39th across uh, is it's busy as well. Come down Fremont Avenue and then hit up the, the Fremont Bridge. And if I hit search again, I think when we go back to Fremont, you can see right here, this is the Fremont Bridge. Cute little bridge. I think they actually voted on what colors, like uh, somehow they took a vote in Fremont to, to pick these colors. So it's orange and blue there. Uh, the Fremont Bridge that spans the cut. So before we get into commuting and all this stuff, I just want to explain just a couple of things. We call this the cut, this this waterway that goes, let me zoom out. Okay, so here's Shoal Shoal Bay outside of Ballard, right? That's really, you zoom, zoom, zoom. That's the Puget Sound, okay? So the Puget Sound, we go really far out. You can see the Puget Sound gets out into the Salish Sea, out into the ocean, right? So you can come in, we can have a lot of big boats come in from the ocean into the Puget Sound from the Salish Sea, wind their way down and come right over here into Ballard. So that, that makes it really convenient and easy for some of those big ships to come through. And some of those ships will come down here on their way to the Port of Seattle or further south into the Port of Tacoma. So. When we're looking at Seattle here, we've got this isthmus. We've got, you know, land here with water on both sides, separated by the cut, and then water on this side, and those two things that come together there. And so what we've got here is actually let me zoom out again. So this is, I think this is pretty cool. Okay, so Puget Sound. We've got Lake Washington, which is massive. Lake Washington wraps around Mercer Island. Now these two bridges that go across, these are floating bridges. So the 520 floating bridge um, and the I-90, uh, yeah, I-90 floats as well, floating bridge, really pretty wild. And this water, the you know, it's connected to the Puget Sound, but it doesn't move up and down with the tide. Uh, it's a lake, but it's controlled by the Ballard Locks. So the Ballard Locks, uh, the Hiram Crittenden Locks, uh, right there in Ballard, help control and make sure that the water level stays where it's supposed to be so that those bridges can operate within spec. And then if you look a little further east, you can see Lake Sammamish. Okay, so Lake Sammamish is a huge lake by itself, but it just looks so tiny compared to Lake Washington and uh, the Puget Sound there. But that's a huge lake, Lake Sammamish. Sammamish is a great, great suburb. That's such a great area. Um, East Lake Sammamish has some of the nicest waterfront and great views. Uh, looking down, you can even see down into Mount, Mount Rainier if you look southwest and sunsets and that sort of thing. Same thing over here when we, you know, uh, Kirkland and Juanita and, and, and look in this south, southwest and Medina, obviously beautiful, beautiful area. Um, right, so all these these great south southwest views where you can capture sunsets, water, and Mount Rainier, pristine, beautiful. But let's get back into get back into Fremont here. Okay, so we know that Fremont is in kind of north northwest Seattle, just north of Lake Union, just south of of uh, um, Green Lake here. And so I kind of want to show you. We zoom in on Fremont. And I think one of the cool features this Google Maps thing does um, <clears throat> is it uh, lets you, so let's zoom in South Lake Union because I want to show you, we zoom in on the Mohai here. I, I love this feature. You can see downtown Seattle right there, the skyline, right? That's looking south. Now we're circling around and we're starting to look west and you'll be able to see it slope up. That's Queen Anne, right? You can see those radio towers back there. That slope up is Queen Anne. Now we're looking across Lake Union towards Gasworks Park with Fremont just to the left. And then now we're looking at East Lake. So we'll let it loop around it one more time. There's East Lake, now kind of Capitol Hill you're seeing. Now you're seeing south through the Seattle skyline, okay? Now we're going to look and we're going to be able to see looking west and we're going to scoot up and look up the hill towards Queen Anne. And then if we look over the shoulder of the lake here to the left, you can that's where Fremont is, Wallingford, East Lake. There it is. So so just want to give you an idea of the landscape as we look at um, the area, because Seattle really is a bunch of hills. Right, so Queen Anne, this is a mat, it's a hill, it slopes up from the lake, and then as it slopes down towards 15th, and then we go over into Magnolia, 
Fremont starts to slope up to the north and then bends back down towards Green Lake. Uh, and then, you know, it there's a, a here's Safeway and Crown Hill. This is kind of a high point up here as well as you slope up away from the cut. So we have the Puget Sound, we get into the Marina, uh, um, Salmon Bay, right? Ballard Locks, Salmon Bay, lots of working uh, marinas through here. And then you go under the Ballard Bridge and then that the Fremont Cut. So if we go back to the Fremont Cut, the reason I bring this up is because there's parks down here and you can get, you know, you go down in the summertime and uh, um, there's some great, uh, great little waterfront walking trail. Burt Gilman goes through here. I'll show you the Burt Gilman. It's a huge bicycle uh, running, jogging path um, that almost is a little, it's a little cut up when it gets into Ballard, um, but it is massive, massive. So there's a the Fremont cut. Okay. So let me see if I can make sense of commuting. Let's go from Fremont, not to my location, but to Amazon spheres. Let's just do the spheres. Cool. So Fremont general location, it's going to have us, I want you to take a look here. It's going to have you from, you know, 39th, which is a, is a fairly busy road because it takes you right on to 99, gets you onto Aurora Avenue, heads you south, down through Dexter, right? And then down into, um, or I guess that's not Dexter. What road is it having us go on? Oh, it's taking 99. Okay, yeah, duh. So from 99, just stay on 99, and then over to the spheres. Looks like it's about a 10 minute drive. If we leave now, let's say that we want to arrive by, let's just change this up here. Let's arrive by 9.30 a.m. Uh, Monday the 28th, and we're gonna drive about 15 minutes. Easy peasy, right? So if you're commuting, easy peasy. If it was me and I was doing this route, I would probably take the bridge, uh, the Fremont Bridge, and then I wouldn't take Dexter, I would wanna take Westlake. So we do that and we take Westlake, we're gonna add some time to that commute. It's much more relaxed roads, which um, to me, I, I don't wanna drive like a crazy person. So I take the relaxed route, makes it pretty easy and convenient to do that. So there we go, 22 minutes, easy, easy. Okay, let's say that you work for Starbucks headquarters, just as a, an aside, because they're further south, south downtown. So let's say Starbucks, we're gonna arrive Monday morning, November the 28th by 9.30. Again, it's almost the same amount of time to drive to the Amazon spheres as it is to drive down to Lumen Field. Man, I'm kind of disappointed, I don't know. There's the Starbucks, Sea Pine Brewing and Soto. T-Mobile, let's do, he worked for T-Mobile, kind of close. So 30 minute drive, take 99, come down, uh, take the toll brick, the toll tunnel, boom, right over to T-Mobile to there. Let's do Microsoft, uh, building 92, no, let's do building nine. Last time I was in building nine in Redmond, uh, had just been remodeled and they had uh, some really good sandwiches. So it's been a little while. Um, pandemic kind of slowed me down from going over there, but uh, to meet meet with folks. Uh, so here we go, right there. There's Overlake Building 9 in Redmond, right there. Uh, if you want to get there uh, Monday morning by 9.30 a.m. for your morning meetings, you know, uh, you could avoid, 520 is a toll bridge, right? So here. So there's a running joke. I'm showing you the map. There's a running joke in Seattle that anywhere in Seattle, you're an hour away from Seattle. So we do east to west. It's difficult, right? Because we got a big lake in the way. North to south seems to work fairly okay. Um, but there isn't any, you know, besides like 99 or, or, or I-5, right? I-5, you can see all this stuff. No one ever asked you to go over to I-5 because it's so far east before you can go south. So you just take 99, right? That's the, even if you're gonna go to SeaTac Airport, um, let's go to SeaTac, SeaTac Arrivals. Uh, airport terminal, where's arrivals? Let's do that, okay. Let's say you had to pick somebody up in the morning. You can see 99, boom, 35 minutes. So everything I'm showing you is showing you around 15, 30 minutes, easy stuff. 
I gotta say though, I would not count. I would add 15 minutes just for your own, you know, for your own uh, edification, knowing that you're gonna be on time. Um, Cause even though it says, says those things and I rely cause I run around a lot. So I rely on the Apple maps all the time to tell me, Hey, how long is it going to take? What's traffic going to look like? I'm using Apple maps. I'm using uh, Waze, which I think Google bought and Google maps comparing, contrasting, and then looking to say, you know, gosh, do I believe it? Do I not believe it? Sometimes adding 30 minutes, depending on how the farther I've got to drive, the more time I add because there's more opportunity for something to go wrong, right? More opportunity for a stalled car, more opportunity uh, uh, for something to go a little haywire. I want to build in that time because I want to be on time. I don't want to have anybody wait for me, especially when we have a plan, right? Okay, so let's get out of here and I'm, I'm going to switch tabs. And I want to show you a little bit about living in Fremont. So I made a kind of a list of all the of all the stuff here. I want to be able to show you some pictures of these things. But um, let's zoom out just a hair. Okay. So here's that 36 to Leary, right? Uh, here's eighth, right around here is where we were seeing um, the uh, uh, substation, right? So this all has you know one of these jobs and so it's you know Fremont the Fremont neighborhood there so the reason I'm bringing this map up is because if you're out and about you want to go to the shops the restaurants and the bars uh, and the, the different breweries in town there's a handful in Fremont Fremont has a ton of stuff to do for a small neighborhood right so they're all kind of right down there by the water. Now there are some stuff on, on Fremont Avenue, some cafes here, and there is some stuff on stone as well, right? So there is that stuff, but real realistically, if you're bar hopping, if you're gonna go out to dinner, or you're gonna go to brunch, maybe you're gonna go to Roxy's Diner, and then, uh, you know, it's three o'clock in the afternoon before you wrap that up. So then you're gonna cross the street and go to Outlander Brewing um, and, and have a beer over there whatever you're going to do you're going to go to the fremont you're going to go to the coffee house uh right there and get a cup of coffee so you can just see here here's that fremont bridge right you can see adobe my office right currently is right next to adobe google's down here adobe's down here um and uh right here is 36 and everything the nectar lounge the uh, uh um everything just seems like it's right right here as you go in Fremont Coffee Company, people, oh my gosh, it's such a cute little coffee shop. It's a great environment, really kind of fun. Theo Chocolates, if you come down to, to you know, at any time and hang out, um, it smells like chocolate in Fremont. That might be like one of the coolest things about Fremont because Theo Chocolate has, uh, you know, they're cooking, they're doing all kinds of stuff there. So uh, let's see, yeah, there's the triangle bar. Let's see if we can, if it'll bring it up. Can we view this in Google Maps? Let's see what's going to happen here. Okay, here's Lenin. So the statue of Lenin is right there on 36, where it, you know you start to go down towards Fremont Avenue and the Fremont Bridge. Uh, they they dress him up all the time. It's an interesting story about uh, about Lenin there. He, uh, um, you know, I think he was in Czechoslovakia. I have to look that up to confirm you know, where he was before. But a private individual actually brought him back and. Uh, it's not the city of Seattle that has, he's on private property. So he's privately owned on private property and he is a big guy. Uh, there's nobody in these pictures standing next to him, but you know, you don't come, you know, you're not very tall next to him. So it's really interesting. You know, like I was saying, Fremont is eclectic. There's some, some different things there. Um, and then I know that there's a picture of the, uh, uh rocket as well. The Fremont rockets, I think it's 53 feet tall. Uh, and that is a recovered, I want to say USSR rocket um, from the from the uh, from that era. And I see I see some uh, another picture down here that I'm going to show you. Hopefully, everybody's covered well. We'll see. Maybe we won't show too much of it. But there you go. These folks are on that naked bike ride, right? So I was talking about them earlier. Uh, it's Chris Cornell. No, that's not in Fremont. Okay, let's go back. Cool. So, oh, zippy zippy. So that takes care of the statue. Um, that takes care of uh, the rocket. Let me get down here and show you where is it. Cause I wanna show you Fremont Brewing. So it's just right here. You can see it as you go and it's gonna, um, 
you know, like I say, they claim to fame. They say they are the center of the universe, and that's in the middle of the walkway here. Here's that busy road, Fremont, uh, Fremont Ave, Fremont Place. If we were to head down past this uh, uh, um, Subaru and, and bus, wind around that corner, that would take you to that Fremont Bridge. And then if you were to follow it up, up to the right there, you would see uh, it would take you on 36, where everything is. Okay. Yeah, so there it is center of the universe right there let's see if there's anything else fun to look at here two roxy's and let's view that in google maps do we have an exterior photo of roxy's yeah so roxy's diner has been there a long time um this is if you look at this tree line street that is 36th right north 36th there's lots of different things here uh george and the dragon is tucked in uh, let's go to George and the Dragon. Where are we? There's Norms. Is that George? Where's George? So George and the Dragon is a fun English pub tucked up uh, the parking lot. They look, they're built, built around. There's, there's townhouses on either side of them now. Uh, used to not be like that, but as things grow and change, so they're still there doing their thing there. Really great spot uh, to grab a pint, watch a soccer match. Uh, that kind of thing, really, really fun there. Um, I want to show you a few other cool spots that I get a kick out of, Bowers Cafe. Let's see if we can get an interior view of Bowers. So this is a cool beer hall, really, really cool. Uh, serves European beers in here, great fries. You can see people taking pictures of the food and stuff, um, but a great, great spot. Kind of tucked away down off of 36, a little bit you know, closer to, uh, a little bit closer to Theo Chocolate, but that's a that's a cool spot. Don't get in there too often, but they always have a really good selection when I do get down there. Um, where else? Outlander Brewing is another cool spot. Now, here's the thing. I've been to Outlander a few times. I mean, I probably could still count on one hand the number of times I, I don't go out that much. Um, but but this place going into it feels like a house, like a college house or something that you went to. Right. It just, you know, they brew the beer. My understanding is, is that they brew the beer right there in the basement. Highly, highly experimental beers that they've got down there. Uh, so always, always changing. Here's another good picture of the outside and uh, um, kind of a cool, cool vibe. I had a friend that that had an engagement party and rented uh, the upstairs, which was wild. Um, yep, in a little littlest tiniest beer garden there so definitely a, a cool spot to go to aslan aslan brewing started up in bellingham and uh, um aslan just opened up a um a tap house so they brew in bellingham but they they come down here and this is in a newer building that just got built so it's it's much more contemporary and uh, uh the building is is really nice i don't know if they have apartments above or if it's office building i didn't really look too much into that um, but it's a big building. They're right there on the corner. Um, but Aslan makes a, a makes a great, great beer there too. So definitely a lot to check out and do in in Fremont. What else is there? Let's see if there's there's the high dive. There was a plant store that was really cool. Um, Fremont Coffee Company. We're just open up tons of tabs to show you. So Fremont uh, Coffee Company. Can we get a picture of the outside again? another old house converted into a business a lot of fremont is like that there's a section out on finney ridge as well that that uh, uh and in wallingford that you know they just kind of commercially zoned rezoned all these areas commercial seattle has this ebb and flow to it um but so very cool coffee shop really great coffee in there i've met some folks in there time and again uh to pop in and and uh hang out and, and uh, uh a great place to meet and uh, just take take have a great cup of coffee um really fun spot let's see what else can i show you here that gives you kind of an idea of all the the vintage mall is wild that's another almost like a bunch of curiosity shops yeah so the vintage mall is like uh uh yeah just a bunch of different like curiosity shops and vintage clothes and knickknacks and uh it's fun to walk through some stuff on consignment other collectibles really kind of a cool spot so there's so there's a ton of stuff to do right there in fremont and so one thing let's see let me close some of these tabs guys let's get back let's go to fremont with all the little streets and stuff kind of hard to see uh 
But okay, so here's that 36. Talked a little bit about 39th. A lot of people will from you know this area in Ballard will come down Leary. You'll take 39th and then you'll jump on Aurora. Um, because my office is just right down here, I just take 36 and jump right uh, through Google and Adobe and wind my way over. Uh, currently, that's what I'm doing. And then what I wanted to show you, let's see, you can kind of tell from this map. Okay, so 39th, you know, we're starting to get slope. We start to go uphill fast after 39th. So 39th, um, a lot of these houses that are north of 39th right here, there's retaining walls or they're built into the hillside or something like that because it starts to go uphill really fast. Um, the, this this section right in here, 39th, 36th, that's 36 diagonal over to like Evanston or Fremont Avenue. Oh, we didn't show you the Fremont Troll. I'm gonna have to show you the Troll. Uh, but anyway, let's talk about this section right here. There's a couple of condo buildings, a couple of small apartment buildings, but mostly townhouses. And there you can see they're pretty piled in, pretty piled in right there. When I have worked with folks that were interested in Fremont, um, what, some of the feedback that I've got about these townhouses, because of the slope and the way that they're built and they're close in, there's not a lot of street parking. And it kind of does feel like uh, your neighbors are, are looking down into your patio area. So you could feel that way. You, you would have to come out and take a look and see if you get the same vibe from it. Uh, but definitely, definitely have heard that feedback multiple times. Now, the thing about Fremont, um, like I said, there's not a lot of street parking. There's a, a few pay for lots down here uh, where Theo Chocolate is uh, in this area, but you have to get zone parking. So you have to get your own parking permits to park on the street out here. So it does get fairly congested. It is kind of hard to find parking. If you come down and you're gonna hang out in Fremont for the day, you're gonna try to find a great parking spot, build yourself in some time so that you can jump right in, find that parking spot, and then walk all around, right? So um, you'll notice that there's a ton of stuff to do on 36th, but the Fremont Brewing is on the other side. They've got a huge beer garden. Let's see if we can, yeah, Fremont Brewing right there. And they've got one of the bigger beer gardens outside. Not as big as, uh, there's a bigger beer garden in Ballard. Um, I forget who's there, Bale Breaker and Yonder are there now. I think they share the space. But Fremont Brewing right here, uh, super well known. They ship out a lot of beer. Uh, they're available in a lot of places, but, but this is their facility there. Um, and then I did want to show you the troll. So we looked at Lennon, we looked at uh, we looked at the rocket, but one of the big things that uh, uh, this Fremont troll, and you can kind of see in these guys' photo, they're a little blurry, that's okay. This is a real Volkswagen Beetle that he's clutching. Um, hopefully you can see that, maybe I'm in the way. I'm not really sure how this is gonna tease out. Um, but there's that Volkswagen Beetle that they're clutching. Let's see, is there another? Me and my brother got a good picture over here one time, but there you go. There's that Fremont Troll. Our Arts Council had put that together and put that. We see, pe man, people are just always, this is the Aurora Avenue bridge uh, that, that he's under. People are always, always snapping photos with the troll under there. So yeah, there's a statue of Lenin. You could walk it. It does get, you know, you're going uphill again over to the Fremont Troll there. Uh, and this area is fairly, fairly flat, which makes it really, really walkable. Um, one of the other things I wanted to talk about was Gasworks Park here. So Gasworks Park is, uh, I guess technically it's in North Lake. People say it's in Wallingford and people think it's in Fremont. Um, who cares? It's cool. So Gasworks is a great park. You know, they, they're going to, let me go back to the map. They're going to light off fireworks uh, right here in Lake Union for the 4th of July. So Gasworks fills up like crazy for that. And uh, um it is just a really neat park. If you've ever seen that movie, uh, 10 Things I Hate About You, they, they filmed a scene here at Gasworks Park. They do not have uh, that paintball course here. That was just for the for the movie, the balloon paintball thing that they did. Um, but water access to Lake Union, you can you know find a spot, put your paddleboard in, take in some sunshine uh, when we have it. And uh, uh, I think, is that? really the view i guess that could be yeah so if the mohai is down here space needle uh maybe here we go fireworks killer so fourth of july boom right there uh really really cool spot so in the houseboats and stuff so super fun 
super fun stuff. Gasworks is really cool. A lot of people go down there, take their paddle boards, that sort of thing. Uh, there is, you know, here's Westlake. There's a couple of the Northwest Outdoor Center. We've been there a few times, rented kayaks and stuff. Really cool spot to get out on the lake in the summer. Um, and then East Lake. So it's not complicated, right? You have South Lake Union, which is south of the lake, West Lake, which is west of the lake, East Lake, which is east of the lake, and North Lake, which is north of the lake there. Fremont sits right there. So I hope that gives you a real clear idea of how convenient and how easy and what a great location Fremont really is with all the stuff to do. The pros and cons of it is, you know, re realistically, like hard to park. It is a little denser. It is not uh, a, a densely populated urban urban setting with sky rises and, and glass and steel buildings. That's all in downtown Belltown, Pioneer Square. Um, you know, buildings are only going to be about six, seven stories tall. You're going to have a lot of townhouses there. And then as you work your way up past 39th, you'll start to get a lot of house houses still in the area. And it's similar to Ballard. We're seeing a lot more townhouses come in, um, but really, really convenient, really, really easy, you know, to get around. Um, and, and so ideally located with good access to uh, you know, you have the Fremont Bridge in 99. You could go a little further if you wanted to and get over to um, I-5. You know, the folks that live in Wallingford really feel like they they got the ideal situation with uh, 99 to the east and I-5, or excuse me, 99 to the west and I-5 uh, to the east. Um, but lots of real opportunity, north and south. Good transit is, is really easy. If you're thinking about making a move out here, just reach out, give me a call, shoot me a, you know, shoot me a text, whatever's convenient for you. We love helping people make this move. Hope you really got an idea kind of, of everything, you know, that you really need to know about where Fremont is, what the opportunity looks like, what that lifestyle feel like. We'll always be putting together a couple more videos. You know, we just did a, a, a pros and cons list. So you're going to want to check that video out as well if you haven't. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. All right. Talk to you.